would you say you're a tiger mom? I know you recently had a daughter. She's yeah. two years old, right? She's two years old. Would you say you're a tiger mom? Um, no, I would probably say I'm like a uh, a kitty cat mom. <laughs> you know, so that's cat actually mom. really cute. Um, I'm not. I don't roll with like an iron fist. Uh, you know, my mom was not as much of a tiger mom either. Yeah. Um, my parents. I was very fortunate to not have. You know, they certainly had certain stereotypical, typical like expectations of get good grades and you know be a doctor and all that. But um, you know, they didn't ground me for having like an A minus. You know, <laughs> or I had some friends who had did that. So I mean, my daughter, I, I'm stern with her in certain things, but mm. I'm not. You know, I, she doesn't have to be involved with like 12 activities, and like she doesn't have to go to Harvard, and you know, oh, okay. she's she's only two at this point. So I mean, I'm actually really glad she's she's kind of an overachiever. So, um, you know, maybe she'll, she'll just got do the it. For a maybe like maybe she doesn't. I mean, maybe that's why my parents weren't tiger moms because like I was probably harder on myself than. Yeah, you know, I think I was, I, I'm pretty much the same too. You know. But you know, they did draw the line, like when I was seven years old, I actually took acting classes and I wanted to be an actress at seven years old. So I almost became a child actor because I got offered um, to sign with an agent. And then my dad's like, I don't want to have to take you out of school. You know, your studies come first. Oh. So so in that regard, they were like, you know what? Like, this is too far as far as extracurricular. Like, we still want you to make school a priority. Yeah, I guess my parents weren't that strict on as far as like straight A's, straight A's, you know, no matter what. But I remember one time in um, eighth grade or seventh grade, I was talking to a guy and then I didn't do my homework that night. You were talking to a guy? Yeah, and you're, not al you're not allowed to date till you're 30. <laughs> until, until I'm like, I have a stable career and, like, and I'm ready to get married. And then you yeah, have one year to meet a guy and get married because then you're going to be too old after that. Yeah, and then have a baby right after. <laughs> but yeah, he was really upset that I didn't do my homework that night. And then afterwards, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to do my homework. <laughs> but yeah, but speaking of you know getting married, you recently got married to only one. Um, and he's yeah. a rapper. He is a rapper. Um, he's uh, he raps about dim sum and engineering. So you can't get more unique than he's the only one that does that. <laughs> so yeah, he's only one is the only one that raps about dim sum, dim sum and, and engineering. engineering. <laughs> you guys are like the the the, the Asian Beyonce and Jay Z. Huh? I know some people say that, and and he what he likes to say is like, okay, so Jay Z and Beyonce they got more money, and you know they're they're more famous than we are, but he likes to think we're better looking. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean. Well, I, personally, I do think my husband's better looking than Jay-Z, but, you know, you know. Yeah, no, no, think, no offense, Jay-Z. Are, are you going to name your uh, child the Yellow Orchid or something? Um, you know, no, I mean, I, I, our daughter's name is, you know, Calia, and, uh, but we, we, we thought about it, Yellow Orchid, or, you know, what is it, Peach Blossom, or you know, <laughs> Cherry Blossom, that would be kind of cool. As far as an untraditional career path, I know your parents are a little bit, Traditional, they're tra a little bit traditional Chinese. How are they now versus back then about, about you pursuing this career in music? Okay, so I grew up brainwashed into thinking I'd become a doctor because my dad's a doctor. And so um, up until I was like 16, you know, I was on that path and then I had the talk with my parents. Mom and dad, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to go into the music industry. No! You're going to starve! You know, like... <sighs> They were just went ballistic and they taught, try, it was like they were trying to talk me off a ledge, you know? Finally, they kind of like came around to it. Calm down. Well, I, one thing I had in my pocket that I know a lot of people don't have is like my father actually was an actor in Hong Kong. He was signed to, he could have signed a contract to Shaw Brothers Studio, which was like the largest motion picture studio, you know, um, back in Hong Kong, back in the day. And he, um, a director told him, if you're smart, you should get out of the country, go to the U.S., you know, you're smart, make a better life for yourself. So he didn't stay in Hong Kong, but, you know, he understood what it was like to be an artist. So I just basically, my argument with him was like, you look, you had your opportunity, you tried, or you, you decided not to try. At least let me try and fail. If I try and fail, I try and fail, but at least I tried and we failed. Try and, yeah. um, so that's kind of how I won my argument. Um, and now, um, you know, my dad's actually retired and he's actually back into acting. Um, so, and my mom used to travel with me on shows and they're, they're very big supporters. I mean, I think still in the back of, their minds, they wish I was a doctor still, you know. You but know what, as a matter of fact, my dad wanted me to be a doctor too. Yeah. And when I was 15, I remember when I was 15 in high school, he was like, okay, you're gonna be a doctor, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I don't wanna decide my life at 15. You didn't get disowned though. No. Okay, that's good. But I, he did say yeah. like, you know, you know, he did, you know, he did get pretty mad. Yeah. I, I mean, my, my family, I remember my mom when I was in college, she kept asking me, she's like, 
So you think about, I, I was already working at record companies and, you know, interning and on that path already. And she's like, do you want to go to MBA school? Even after I was working at the record company, you want to go to law school? I mean, so there was always that like need or even other family friends like were like, that's it, you're not going to do more school. Like you just have your degree and that's that's all. I'm like, you just be lucky that I got my degree because like half the people I know in the entertainment industry don't even have their degree. So, um, you know, it's just a different ball game. You know, I would never trade my college education for, you know, anything. I think it's important to have that basis. I used to be one of those people like that had thought, I was such a control freak growing up. Like I thought I had my whole life figured out and then I decided to go into music and like my whole world just like completely like changed. And so um, for someone who was an overachiever who planned her whole life. I thought I was going to be a doctor. I thought, you know, I oh, thought, wow. thought I was going to be married at 30 or whatever, you know, and I had whatever, like I had laid out for my life, you know, um, at 12 years old, um, you know, um, is completely different. So, um, you know, I think sometimes when you have those expectations, like this is exactly what I have to do, or this is exactly how things are going to go. It's harder to deal with them. But I think when you end up in a point like I did where I've, and you know, and that's just one be instance. Be a little bit more spontaneous. Yeah, to be not just spontaneous, but to be able to improvise. I think that's a better word to like use is that you have to be flexible in life. You know, I think as Asian Americans, sometimes it's like we're so ingrained about like not being flexible that this is the way things are so that's the way things will always be but mm -hmm. you know i i feel like there's so much more i don't know what's going to happen in five or ten years or even like next year but mm -hmm. i feel like as long as like my purpose is to keep making great music to hope hopefully inspire and challenge people with those messages and make an impact you know in media and in culture and i think if i keep those goals in mind then then you know i'll, I'll be okay yeah if our purpose is to serve but we cannot fail no, absolutely. I think when you turn your attention away from yourself as well, it's like, I think if it's all about you and like what you want to do, then it's so easy to get disappointed. But like, I think when you start looking at the greater picture and, and hopefully, you know, that's what I say. Like, I think as an, a woman and as an Asian American, I have an even greater responsibility to represent like my people, so to speak, is because there's so few of us in like media or in this arena. And so I think like every opportunity that I have for that platform, I'm going to want to influence good and not just, you know, pump up my platform but hopefully raise other people's platforms you know so yeah absolutely thank you so much for doing that <laughs>